another electric vehicle explodes in a garage. Thankfully, nobody was injured, but it's only a matter of time before one of these events ends in tragedy. This incident happened on March 30th, and it involved a Volvo XC60. Now, this is a plug-in hybrid electric vehicle, and I get a lot of flack when I call these vehicles electric vehicles. But notice the last two words, electric vehicle. It's still an electric vehicle, and it can run in fully electric mode, which means it has a large lithium-ion battery. And the lithium-ion battery is the problem when you start talking about issues like this. Now, I never would have expected that we would be in a position where we would have vehicles actually exploding. That wasn't something I thought was even possible. But here we are, and there have been a number of them over the last year and a half. Now, the Volvo XC60 has a long, narrow battery right down the center of the vehicle. From what I can tell, this vehicle has six battery modules. Each battery module uses 16 pouch-style cells. Now, it seems like there might be issues with this model and moisture actually getting into the battery pack. There's a number of these batteries sold on eBay aftermarket. And when you look at the way this battery is designed and the way the thermal management system is designed on this battery, it doesn't surprise me that they have issues. These battery modules have individual cold plates between the battery cells. And these battery modules actually plug into a manifold with these little O-rings. Lots of opportunity to leak. The battery that's being torn down in this particular video did have moisture inside of it and signs of some type of leak. Now, I don't know for sure that that's coming from the coolant, but it's a good possibility. Now, when this vehicle exploded, the fire department was on scene, garage door open, and the firefighters were in the middle of doing their 360 size up, trying to understand what was going on with this vehicle. Initially, they had white wispy smoke coming into the passenger compartment of that vehicle, but instantaneously, heavy white smoke, which is realistically the batteries off-gassing into the interior compartment of that vehicle. Those gases, they're flammable explosive, lots of hydrogen, CO, CO2, and eventually they deflagrated inside of that vehicle. They blew open the rear hatch, blew out the windows. Thankfully, nobody was hurt. What a lot of people don't realize, anytime the battery is failing like this, it's off-gassing, those gases are toxic. It's a hazmat situation. And when you look at the guidebook, 330 feet, that's the standoff distance for a hazmat incident involving gas. Now, is this realistic in a situation like this? Not really. And it's unfortunate, but we really have to start setting up hot zones and we really have to make sure that we're staging upwind. Anyone that gets close to this incident in the hot zone, they're wearing proper PPE with SCBA to protect themselves. The hazards around these batteries when they're off gassing, it is significant. And apparently deflagration is a hazard far more realistic than anybody has realized. Let's look at these pictures from the Colorado incident. Look at the door panel. They're actually ballooned out. This vehicle exploded before the fire department got into their operation, before they were flowing water. Again, they were still sizing up the incident when this happened. Fire crews reported that there was fire around the high voltage disconnect. The high voltage disconnect for this vehicle is located essentially in the rear seat of this vehicle, right in the center on the floor. I wouldn't expect this to be a possibility with most electric vehicles out there. It's highly dependent on vehicle construction in what path that battery has to off-gas into the interior compartment of that vehicle. In this case, there's that high voltage disconnect there, and likely there's some type of failure that allowed those batteries to gas into the interior compartment. Once the gases are inside that vehicle, they're confined in a container, and that's a recipe for disaster. This vehicle was charging at the time of the failure, right around 6 a.m. Luckily, the owner had working smoke alarms, and that alerted the owner to the failure of that vehicle. It's absolutely critical that you have working smoke alarms in your house. Check them. Check them twice a year. Change the batteries if they're not sealed. Test them. Every smoke alarm is going to have a button. Press that button and it's going to beep. That's how you know it works. But on top of that, make sure you know the age of your smoke alarm. Because smoke alarms are only good for about 10 years. And they actually say on the back of the alarm the date, the date of the manufacturer. So make sure you're within that 10-year period of time. When the owner found the vehicle smoking, they actually unplugged that vehicle from the charger prior to the fire department arrival. Hopefully, this does not become a common occurrence. If you want to learn more about explosions that have happened worldwide involving electric vehicles, click this link right here.